Hi guys, welcome along to the studio today. We are going to have a look at working with pump action acrylic paint markers today. And I'm just gonna do something so simple, but it can be really effective. So we're going to have a look at using our, these are a broad nib marker. We're going to use them to spatter onto some raw polymer clay. So I like to work on raw clay because if I create a nice sheet of raw clay, I can then use it to manipulate onto 3D objects like this, beads, which are my favorite thing to do. So, um, or you can use them in the flat to um, create simple flat pieces as well. So lots that you can do if you're using this paint on raw clay. All right, let's pull these out of the way. And I've got quite a few samples here. I'm not going to run through all the samples. Every single one is a variation. So you can see that I've done um, six variations. So just by tweaking things slightly, you can create a completely different look on your clay. So uh, I'm going to show you basically how to do the spattering. And then after the video, I will take an image of the veneer and I will explain how I've done it. So that'll save me doing a million videos and it will save you having to watch them all. So keep looking at the end of the video for instructions on how to create the additional pieces, okay? All right, first things first, let's have a look at our paint pens. I'm just going to get some paper. These are Iron Lac Pump Action Chisel Tip Paint Markers. Now there's lots of different brands on the market. I'm not an expert. If you want all the information about them, please do a search for yourself. I will tell you a couple of basic things and I will tell you that it is in my opinion, essential to store these um, laying flat. So this way the pigments settle along the length of the marker, not in one end or the other. If you store them this way upright, um, you'll end up with your pigments settling down into the nib end of the marker, which could clog up your um, the nib end. And we don't want that, really. So. Uh, always store them flat, nice and easy. The other thing that can happen is your nib can end up going dry. So if this happens, you simply pop it in some water, give it a bit of a wash out, or either remove the nib or just put the end in the water. Uh, I have been told on good authority that is the best way to do it. So um, that is simply what I would do to um, get those nibs working again. I guess it's a bit like leaving paint in a paintbrush to dry. So that's just very brief. As I said, I'm not an expert. So um, do a little bit of research yourself if you want to find out more. Okay, what we're going to do now, when I first started doing this, I actually just did it on the table. Sorry, I've got a little bit of stuff on my table here. I'll just move that. So um, yes, I did it on my workspace and I kind of had paint everywhere, which wasn't ideal, wasn't uh, a very good thing to do. So I kind of just created like a little bit of a, a spatter shield, I guess you would call it. Now, uh, this protects my work surface and stops all the wayward sprays going over everything else. All right, so I've taken some raw clay and I have run this through my pasta machine, the thickest setting being number one. I've run this through on a number four setting. So um, it tends to be just what I like all my um, clay veneers to be. I've burnished it onto, let me show you, onto some baking paper so that it's not gonna fall off. And the reason I've burnished it is to protect the back of my clay. If I want to use this and cut shapes out of this and use it as is, then the back of my clay is going to be beautiful and clean. If I had it just sitting on the base, I could potentially end up with a grubby 
back piece of clay, if that makes sense. All right, let's get started on doing our spattering. So the very first thing, and look, this is not rocket science. This is so easy, but let's just give our marker a little bit of a pump so that the paint will flow down into the nib area. So we've got a good lot of paint on our nib area here now. And I'm gonna take a straw and there are two different or a couple of different effects you can achieve doing um, the spattering. And if I hold my pen, you can see I've kind of got it right at the, the top of my um, spatter shield. If I hold it up here and blow from this height, I'm gonna end up with a fine spatter. If I hold it down closer, I'm gonna end up with this kind of radiating spatter, which I really love. All right, so let's try a little bit of both. Hopefully I won't get my head in this video. <laughs> this is the second video. <laughs> my big head was in the last one, so I'll try and not get it in there. Okay, so a nice big blow and I'm holding down close to the surface. And I'll just bring that up to show you. You can see I have a really nice radiating spatter effect on that piece of clay. So let's just do it once more. Uh, we'll go this color, I kind of like this color. There are some gorgeous uh, colors in these paint pens. They really are beautiful. And there are so many things you can do with them. I love working with these in polymer clay. All right, I'm gonna go from above now and just do a fine spatter. Okay, so you can see the difference. We've got a nice fine spatter and that's because we worked from, or we blew our paint from a height. So I would continue on and do a few more colors on here. One thing to point out, this area here of paint, if I, it's quite, um, you know, there's quite a bit of paint on this area. So if I blow on that, it blows the paint around even more. So if you've got, just keep that in mind, if you're adding more colors and you're blowing onto the surface, if you've got wet paint, then you're going to be moving it around. So it is just something to keep in mind as well. But kind of cool, <laughs> it's a bit addictive to do this. All right, I really don't think I need to show you anything else. It's pretty much, that's it, pretty basic. Now you can achieve, as I said, a very similar effect using a paintbrush and just using some, uh, let me bring them in, fluid or liquid acrylics. Um, they tend to work really well. So that's what I've been using anyway. So uh, one important thing to remember when I do these videos, it's from my experience. So this is what works for me in my studio. You may do it differently. Others may do it differently. That is fine. This is just my experience. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one. And at the end of the video, you'll see, as I said, um, some some of the images of these pieces with instructions. So keep watching. All right, that is it for now. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye for now.